Hey guys and welcome back to a new video about coroutines and this video particularly will be about run blocking. Run blocking is a function that gives us a suspending context wherever we want. So by default we can't execute suspend functions like delay here in normal functions. So if we call delay here then you will notice we can really do that because we're not inside of a suspend function or inside of a coroutine. However, sometimes you just don't have access to such a coroutine score where you can execute suspend functions. And if you then have to execute a suspend function, you might come to the idea to use run blocking because run blocking will give us this suspending context. You can see inside here, we can execute the delay function, which is a suspend function. But what run blocking will do here is it will block the underlying threat in which it is launched in when and when a suspend function is executed inside of this block. So here in this context, where we would execute run blocking on our main thread, on our UI thread, this would be terrible because this delay call would just freeze the whole thread and all of our UI updates would also be frozen. So definitely don't do that. But I'm pretty sure you already knew that. I'm also pretty sure that you've already been wondering when it's actually fine to use run blocking because in the end, the coroutine SDK gives us this function. So there must be some kind of use case where run blocking is fine. And there are actually two of these use cases which I want to go over in this video. And the first use case where it's okay, but you should definitely take some care is if you are launching this in a normal thread, which is not your app's main thread. So right here, again, don't do this. But if we take a look at something like this auth interceptor. So we have something like retrofit in our app. I want to make sure that we attach our session token to each and every request as the authorization header. So we don't need to attach that manually every time. That is what we could use an interceptor for. And then we have some kind of session storage, which stores our session token. And then when we want to make a request, we read that token from our session storage, which is just an asynchronous operation, asynchronous function. So we would need to execute that in some kind of suspend function. However, the way OKHTP works and retrofit works is these interceptors don't work with coroutines or they at least weren't built with coroutines. So you can see this intercept function isn't really a suspend function. So we can't execute this session storage get session token function just like it is because get session token is a suspending function and we need to execute that in a suspending context. If that would be a suspending function, that would be fine. But since OKHP doesn't support that, it's not fine in this case. So you already saw that I wrapped this call into a run blocking block. Won't this also break or freeze our UI thread in this case? No, because OKHTP actually launches new threads under the hood when we execute network calls. And this intercept function just runs inside of such a separate thread. So this run blocking block won't actually block our real main thread because this is not executed on the main thread here, but rather the thread that this is executed in. So OKHTP thread. But I still want to highlight that you have to take a lot of care with this because OKHTP still might not execute a new thread for every single network call it makes, but it rather uses some kind of thread pool. So a pool of, let's say, 20 different threads. But if you then have to make 40 network calls, then that might mean that some threads might be reused to make a network call. And if you then use run blocking, then this line might also block the execution of network calls for later, uh, that are actually executed later. So an alternative solution in this case would be to just have some kind of a flow maybe inside of that session storage, which you observe, and that you just keep an in-memory reference to that session token. So that you on the one hand have it in persistent storage and also as a, a simple variable in your code, which you can access from here. But generally executing run blocking inside of a normal thread, which you could also launch just like this, so thread, and then have run blocking in here, this would not block your app's main thread and would technically be okay in that regard. But again, take care with that. Okay, so that was one use case where run blocking can be fine. Another use case would be for testing. So if we take a look here in this use case package, I prepared a little logout use case, which really just makes sure um, to use these three classes or session storage, notification manager and node cache. Let's say we have some kind of node app where the user can log in and they also get some kind of notifications for each node or maybe they have some kind of reminders or so. And when the user then logs out, we of course need to do multiple things. On the one hand, we need to clear our session token from our session storage. We want to dismiss all notifications. So if there's some kind of reminder for a node and the user then logs out, we just want to hide that notification. 
And lastly, we want to clear our node cache. So since a cache is usually just associated to one user, we want to invalidate that and clear it when the user logs out. And all that could belong to the single action of logging out, which is why I've included that in a use case. You can see this execute function is a suspending function. Also this clear session token and node cache clear function are suspending functions as you can see with these errors. So what happens if we now want to test this? We can simply write a test case for this by hitting alt enter and then clicking create test. Let's just have a very basic test setup. I'm not going to get into uh, detailed testing here. But if we have a simple unit test like this here, and we would want to have a function that actually tests this logout use case, maybe tests that the, the cache is really clear after making this call, after executing the use case, we could have a test that um, test logout, for example. Let's keep it very simple. In JUnit, we annotate this with test. And instead of this test function, we obviously need to execute our use case because we want to perform that call to our logout use case and then after that, verify that the result is really what we expect. So for example, that the node cache is really empty after calling the use case. And for that, we obviously would need to call our logout use case. So let's say we would have that here, um, private, let's make it late in it variable, logout use case. Of course, you would also need to initialize this uh, in another function. But let's keep it simple and just execute our logout use case here. Execute. You will notice that does not work. And normal JUnit test functions also can't be suspend functions. Um, this will give you an error at runtime. So that's also not a solution. And you can probably already guess it. Here, it's totally fine to use run blocking. And that is really the safest use case where run blocking is always fine. So if we say we have a run blocking block here, then suddenly we don't have any more errors because this will block the current threat where this test is being executed. But for test cases, that is actually exactly what we want. Because when it comes to testing, we really want to bring all these asynchronous calls which are executed in parallel across our app. We want to take these and bring them into, in, into a synchronous action. Because asynchronous calls always mean that things could be executed in any order and that could lead to various results. But when it comes to testing, we want consistency. We want that we execute this test case a thousand times and it delivers us the same result a thousand times. And in order to achieve that, we just need to use run blocking to make to, or to take all these suspending calls and bring them into a synchronous flow. Because this test case is then suddenly only executed on a single thread and not on many, many threads um, like in the production app. And after this, you would then, of course, validate the result, but I will not get into testing here. Although if that is something you would like to get into, then definitely check out my testing course, which gets really deep into this topic from super simple scenarios up to testing a huge production app with, I think, 50 modules. All that is covered in this course, which I will link you down below. Other than that, I hope you now know when it's fine to use run blocking. So in the two scenarios I showed you here, in the first one, still take a lot of care. And the second one, your will is safe when using run blocking here in test cases. In all other scenarios, it's very likely that you're making a mistake when using this front blocking function. So thanks for watching. Check out my testing course down below. And other than that, I wish you an amazing rest of your week. See you back in the next video. Bye bye.